Assalamu alaikum and greetings from the Ohio State University. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the committee, particularly uh, Professor Hanan and Professor Mehta to invite me to this uh, conference. So I'll be talking about two particular processes and the title is uh, photoionization and electron ion recombination of calcium ions for astrophysical modeling. Uh, these two particular processes contribute to the spectroscopy in the uh, astrophysical plasmas or normal plasmas and uh, how they um, contribute uh, and uh, particularly for calcium ions that I have used, chosen an example. That's what I'll be talking about today. Okay, the calcium is uh, very important. Uh, it is uh, found in the bones and also uh, up to the space. Uh, so calcium is produced during supernova explosions. And uh, they then it gets scattered and it is the form that goes to the planetary system like us and you know, when sun was uh, born and calcium came. So it is in our bones and all, as well as it's found in the space. And uh, uh, we know the calcium ions are found in the solar flares like this. And this is the spectrum of the sun. And in this spectrum, if you go to the left and I just KH, those are the lines of calcium in, in the sun. So calcium is abundant everywhere, but we cannot see the lines of calcium in astrophysical spectrum. Until recently, we have been finding more lines in the supernova spectra. So recently we found one uh, uh, supernova uh, novae here, right here, it's called SN2016 HNK in a, uh, galaxy called Messier, and the spectrum shows um, rich <clears throat> uh, calcium uh, in a spectrum. So it is a calcium rich uh, uh, supernova, and in the first peak that belongs to calcium. So uh, it, it is a calcium too, but we are expecting more lines or more ions to be detected as more uh, observatories are being launched in space. Uh, uh, particularly, we are waiting for James Webb Space Telescope, which will be launched pretty soon, and which has a long range of wavelengths to detect. So typically, we um, study the transitions between, uh, among the bound levels for uh, uh, to observe the spectral lines. Uh, so. Uh, Electron and a photon can be absorbed. Electron can go to excited state, you know, by uh, by absorption, or it can come down and um, by emission of a photon. And from this kind of spectrum, which is uh, the spectrum of carbon ion, so uh, for ion is absorbing photon and getting excited, then it decays and I give out the photon, the inverse, and we get the ion back. But this photon carries out all the information. And we usually calculate two quantities for this kind of bound-bound transitions. The transition uh, 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 probability or, uh, the, or radiative decade and the oscillatory strength or the F. And if we calculate uh, those values for large number of uh, transitions, uh, because an atom can be excited in finite number of levels, we can use those values to uh, produce a theoretical spectrum, that's the way it is produced here for calcium 15. This 15, you know, and it, it is over a wide wavelength range and, and uh, uh, 7,448 transition went to make this uh, spectrum. And this spectrum in uh, uh, one information we get the, where the lines are very strong and what is the wavelength region that we can choose to detect the element. So our space observatories, the telescope and, uh, uh, can be uh, focused to that region or we can look at the spectrum and then we can say where the calcium 15, for example, should be available. But these are for the strong lights for bound bound transitions. 
but there are another kind of uh, lines form due to bound free transitions. Bound free transition is, you know, uh, for, um, just explaining, this is the energy diagram of an atom, for example. So these are negative states so until at, at positive state, it becomes an ion. The electron gets free, but this electron can be also excited from the ground state to various excited states. Below each excited states, there are quantum states. They are called Rydberg states, and they are particularly called autoionizing states, and they, are, they lie above the ionization threshold here. And these quantum states uh, are quasi-bound. For example, a free electron coming toward this ion and with this energy matching with one of the energy state, and this uh, uh, then form a quasi-bound state, and or it is usually also called doubly excited uh, state, but uh, it is a short lived, it breaks down and gives out the line, and which is appears as resonance, which you call a resonance um, in the spectrum. So, for example, photoionization without resonance with like a smooth curve. But if we have this kind of situation where uh, the ion uh, is uh, uh, excited, the, and, and, the, and the electron is attached to it, we can produce this kind of resonances. Actually, what is forming here, for example, this atom, the core ion can be excited here, and the, uh, the outer electron can be at this energy, forming that state, and these energies are determined by these formulas. So the resonances are formed at these energies. All right. Uh, how can we uh, obtain that or see that kind of resonance theoretically is to main um, uh, a point lies how we describe the wave function. This is the wave function of the electron ion ion. And in that wave function, if we include the core ion, chi i wave function, various uh, in various excited states and multiply that by the interacting electron, then we get one form of wave function, which is known as closed coupling uh, wave function expansion. This kind of uh, expansion has this advantage is that the excited states, when used in transition matrix element, for combining with an interference with the other state, uh, the bound state, it can form uh, resonance naturally. So this is the only way we can do it uh, naturally at this time. And uh, this is an expansion. So when you put that in the uh, Frontier equation, it uh, ends up a set of coupled equation to solve. And we can use the R matrix method to solve uh, that uh, e uh, set of equation. And uh, it is uh, then if we get a negative energy as an eigenvalue, the corresponding wave function will be bound state if the energy is positive, the corresponding wave function will be continuum or free state. The, I'd like to mention our matrix method is presently the most powerful method to study atomic processes. And my results corresponds to uh, the calculations from our matrix method. There's a package of codes that are needed to do the calculations. And this, the diagram shows the, all the, the algorithm, various stages of computation. And uh, there are three ways to compute, but all this computation end up giving very accurate or precise results for uh, energy levels, oscillatory strengths, photoionization cross sections, recombination cross sections, collision strengths. All these uh, data uh, from these processes go for astrophysical and plasma modeling. So this process, what is photoionization, is just simply ionization by absorption of a photon. So ion absorbs the photon and we have ionization. This is the free electron. This is the direct photoionization. But if the energy of the photon is such that we can have the situation of that quasi bound state or doubly excited state before the ionization. So photoionization, photon is absorbed and it goes through that quasi bound state. And before it breaking it down, then we introduce a resonance in the process or the line in the process. So we'll see the results. This is, uh, it is very important to include this uh, resonance because it is happening in nature constantly. Photoionization is a very important process. It is happening around us, where is the light source. So it is around, around us, but for plasmas, like astrophysical plasmas, it, it is uh, 
the ionization is happening by a radiated source like a star, uh, then uh, we have to you calculate the cross sections for photoionization, for such as this is the nebula or plasma where it is illuminated by the stars. Or the and also here is the sun and the, it has the corona outside photosphere. So there is ion uh, here. The plasma is uh, uh, ionized by photons. Uh, so photoionization. So uh, if we want to know the abundance, you know, ionization fraction of any element, and uh, here we can we have to use a photoionization cross section and also the re electron ion recombination rate coefficient. This shows the um, equation of balance, uh, then left side shows the photo you know, ionization, like the cross section here with the, the flux density. And the, this is the ion uh, number. And on the right side, we have recombination rate coefficient. So we can always find the ionization fraction of this uh, ratio from this equation and, uh, from the, and, and using the cross section of photoionization and electron ion recombination. All right, so this shows the results of the photoionization spectrum. But this spectrum belongs to a simpler system. It is a lithium like calcium. Um, it is calcium, uh, uh, I think it's 18. And, uh, and the, this spectrum shows, you know, uh, it carries a lot of information on these lines. So you see, these are the resonances or, or the lines. Okay, so at the beginning, we can see that, you know, uh, it is ionizing smoothly down. There is no feature. The reason is that because it is hydrogenic and the uh, doubly excited state has not formed yet. But at these energies, the quantum state uh, uh, now exists and they start to form very strong resonances. These are log scale. These resonances are forming. And these resonances can be seen in the absorption spectrum, in the, particularly in the X-ray region. So we can see um, uh, another feature that you know, at certain, at this energy, there's an enhancement in the background. The reason is that you know, this is the uh, excitation of the core ion to a dipole allowed state and the N2. So it, uh, that uh, strong um, transition has this raised this uh, background cross section. And beyond this cross section, you know, this is for N2 or the excited state. But beyond that, we have uh, other excited states, and but resonances are very weak, showing that resonances have been conversed. So I'll show another picture or the spectrum of uh, photoionization. These two are particular for calcium 15. Uh, this is the spectrum of two excited states. This is the low lying excited state, and this is the high lying uh, excited uh, uh, state. And so in, the, in both cases, uh, we see resonances uh, in this region, um, uh, not as strong as the region here. This is very high energy region. And uh, all these resonances, they belong to excitation of the core or uh, to N2 complex. And they all belong to excitation of the core to N3 complex. So this high energy region did, was not studied in the past before the opacity project that uh, I belong to. This was found under this project, actually I found it, um, that there are very strong resonances exist at very high energy region. Okay, these uh, lines, uh, they contribute considerably in the spectra. Uh, so, and this uh, more prominent in the highly excited states. But in these two spectrum, we also see something, you know, the, the arrows are pointing, wide resonances like here you know these wide resonances they are called seton resonance these resonances appear when core itself instead of producing you know that kind of quantum state core itself is excited and then goes down and if the energy matches for excitation and they are manifested as this wide area uh, on the background so this is for photoionization for electron ion recombination. This process, I'm showing it that uh, if there's a vacancy in the atom, for example, there's a vacancy here, a free electron moving around and find the vacancy and uh, goes there to recombine with this ion. And so it has um, 
at this point, he has a positive energy. It, it recombines it to be negative energy. So there is enough energy it has to lose to combine. That energy comes out as a photon. And this photon is seen in the spectrum as a recombination line, which sometimes we call REL, recombination line. So what is happening? There's uh, the ion exists, the electron is coming, combining with the photon. Uh, ion and giving out the photon, which can be studied as a decombination line. But what happens, just similar to photoionization, if the energy becomes exactly matching to those so quantum state, autoionizing states, so before uh, uh, this uh, uh, decombination, we can have doubly excited states and which will introduce a line in the recombination process. So photoionization and electron ion decombination, they are exactly inverse process. So uh, we can study them in a similar fashion. I just like to mention one thing, when there's a direct recombination, we call it radiative recombination. When there is a resonance produced in the recombination, we call it dielectronic recombination. The recombination is also uh, uh, occurring in the process around us everywhere, even in the very thin plasmas, when there is almost is an empty space in in, in space in a, where it is almost empty in you know, space, so uh, the electron is still can go and combine with an ion and uh, give out one recombination line. The emission spectrum that you see, particularly for say hydrogen, though we can those are formed because of recombination. So if we have plasma, say cold plasma, then it means that the plasma is not excited to high level to give out photons for that uh, correspond to excited state. So how uh, sometimes we see those lines, for example, line you know, uh, from this excited level coming down there and the photon, and then we consider, uh, can think of where this photon coming from. It is coming from the recombination, electron recombines and as the um, electron goes down to lower states like as cascading down, it gives us photon. So in uh, um, both, uh, the emission line often is created by true recombination. So uh, this is so uh, one thing. Also, when we have a, a, no, no, a line detected from the low line cell excitation, then it depends, the intensity depends on the level population, how many levels have been populated, how many photons being uh, no, emitted. But uh, this level population also depends on the recombination because as uh, electrons are recombining, they are coming and populating different levels. So recombination also plays a role. And it also can give the abundances of element through its uh, emissivity quantity. Emissivity depends on this quantity. Now the abundance of an element, which is give, uh, now we recombine, and it, this is the effective rate, uh, recombination rate coefficient. So this through this uh, equation, we can get the abundance. Also, we can get the ionization fraction using this uh, uh, equation of balance. Uh, it is covered right now. So on left side, we have ionization, electron impact ionization, particularly in the coronal plasma, where um, the, all these uh, uh, atoms are being ionized through uh, collisions. And on the right side, we have electron ion recombination. So uh, in solving this equation, you can also get ionization fraction. So um, how we can calculate, because these two processes are related, uh, we introduced a, a, a method uh, called unified method by Anil Pradhan and myself. Uh, the unified method uh, uh, implements the um, the inverse uh, um, uh, nature of the two processes. The transition matrix element, uh, now, which depends on the bound and free states, is the same for both photoionization and electron ion recombination. And if we take the mod score, we get the line strength. And from the line strength, we can calculate the recombination cross section. Uh, sorry, photoionization cross section. And if we know the photoionization cross section, we can calculate the recombination cross section using principle of detailed balance. And these are all kinematic factors. So when we have resonances say, in the photoionization cross section, that means these resonances appear as 
dielectronic recombination in, uh, in the recombination process. So in a way, we can include both radiative and dielectronic recombination and uh, um, they in, uh, combine together uh, from photoannulation cross section and which is implemented in our method, uh, unified method. So unified method actually so subsumes both the radiative recombination and dielectronic recombination and the interference between the two process and give the total recombination rate coefficient. This is different compared to other methods so which uh, gives the uh, recombination rate coefficients where uh, each part is computed separately. That means when you compute separately with different approximation, add them together, you are already introducing quite a bit of uncertainty in the total recombination rate coefficient. So, the, so for this uh, unified method, uh, what we do, we include um, recombination to infinite number of bound levels, but we divide all those levels into two groups. Group A have uh, no, bound levels up to n equals to 10, and then uh, all the levels from n 10 to infinity. So we calculate cross-section, photo addition cross-sections of all these levels, and take the, use the principle of digital balance to get the recombination cross sections, and for this, uh, uh, now uh, states where they, uh, the states are very close together and narrow, it is very difficult to calculate the photoannulation cross section. We use uh, uh, um, uh, DR or dielectronic recombination theory of balance Seaton, which we have been, we extended to uh, calculate the um, recombination rate coefficients. So our method provides a total recombination rate coefficient, which includes contributions from infinite number of recombined states. And also the results are, gives a self-consistent photoanalyzation and recombination on a cross action because we use the same wave function to obtain both quantities. And also it gives a total level specific recombination rate coefficients because it includes both RR and DR, which the other methods uh, cannot give naturally. So this shows an uh, example of um, uh, recombination spectrum. This is particularly for calcium-15. You can see the spectrum, all these lines, they can be, uh, well, they can be seen in the spectrum uh, if uh, the given that condition, the plasma condition, and, uh, uh, but, this uh, spectrum can be produced not exactly, but if you multiply it with the velocity of the electron, photoelectron, we can ca calculate the recombination rate coefficients with respect to photoelectron energy. This is the spectrum we can get, and this spectrum can be measured in the uh, laboratories. So this is of interest because uh, it benchmarks the methods uh, we are implementing and the uh, um, accuracy of the results we obtain. However, for astrophysical modeling, we don't use these uh, levels. We take the temperature average rate, which will go to the model. So if we take the temperature average rate, we get recombination rate coefficient. So this uh, figure shows the features of uh, level specific recombination rate coefficients. The example is uh, calcium 15. So it's the recombination rate coefficient with temperature for the ground state and the uh, uh, various excited state uh, uh, going up to higher excited states. And you can see that the features are not similar. They depend on the temperature. And this dependence uh, depends actually the underlying reason is the resonance. Resonance existence of more resonance will produce this kind of rise. So even though ground state is going down, smoothly down, but this excited state is showing rise in recombination at this temperature. And that is because uh, no, the resonances are being produced for, uh, no, for uh, doubly excited states. Okay, I want to show the uh, total recombination rate coefficient where the contributions are added for all an you know, infinite number of uh, recombined states. The red curve shows the total recombination rate coefficients that we obtain using the unified method. And this is uh, the precise uh, uh, rate, I would say, 
because if you compare, and now this is the rate, this is only for RR, the DTP recommendation uh, obtained by other people. And this is the DR, so separate treatment. So uh, you can add them together to get the total, but you cannot get the exact amount of interference uh, between these two processes, which is uh, taken into account by the unified method. And the unified method had also introduced you know, three small humps, and particularly the last one, which is raise the whole recommission rate to coefficient. So this is what will go for the astrophysical modeling. Not only for astrophysical modeling, these rates are needed to get the um, ionization fractions of uh, uh, and the uh, element that we are interested. So this is what I wanted to mention that, uh, that there are two additional processes the photoionization and electron ion recombination, they are important. Their resonances contribute to the resonances that we see in astrophysical spectra, not in resonance, but if the resonances are not strong enough to contribute the strength of the astrophysical and uh, spectral resonances, they dissolve in high density plasmas, they dissolve and uh, impact the continue or the background and of the shift of the uh, shape of the background. So these two processes are uh, crucial for uh, spectral modeling. And uh, I've just shown the features uh, and the importance that it, it uh, um, and the example is calcium because uh, calcium I've been studying lately. And uh, thank you for listening. And uh, um, if there's any question, I can accept this. Thank you very much. I'll stop, okay. Um, I'll close this and stop sharing. And I will stop the recording. Just hope somebody where is that? to stop the record. Okay, here it is.